found that yeah. you sexually abused the writer E. Jean Carroll and defamed her. You've denied this. But what do you say to voters who say it disqualifies you from being president? Well, there aren't too many of them because my poll numbers just came out. They went up. <laughs> okay. Do you think that, that that will deter women from voting for you? No, I don't think so, because I think the whole thing, just so you understand, ready? I never met this woman. I never saw this woman. You are running in the 2024 race. If you are the Republican nominee and you are in that 2024 race, will you commit tonight to accepting the results of the 2024 election? Yeah, if I think it's an honest election, absolutely I would. Will you commit to accepting the results of the election regardless of the outcome? You want me to answer it again? If I think it's an honest election, I would be honored to. They raided my house. They didn't raid the house of Joe Biden. They didn't raid Obama. But Joe Biden didn't ignore a subpoena to get those documents back like Joe you Biden did. And took so that's 1850 the question. But that's the question that investigators have, I think, is why you held on to those documents when you knew the federal government was seeking them and then had given you a subpoena to return them. Are you them. ready? Are you ready? Can I talk? Yeah, what's you the mind? answer? Can I, do you mind? I would like for you to answer the okay, question. Okay, it's very simple to answer. That's why I asked it. It's very simple to You're a nasty person, I'll tell you. <laughs> You're a nasty person. I'm Everyone laughing. Now. Everyone laughing as well. It was fine. Very base. It's very base. It's Let's very bring in direct. Dr. Christopher Phelps, who teaches American history um, at Nottingham University. Good morning to you. Um, look, I never like to see professionals uh, being sort of criticised in that way. She's simply doing her job. I find it funny. I find it funny, and most people would laugh. You're not there did you, to doctor, go to did, a comedy show. You're there you, to well, listen you're, to you're debate. You're there to win the argument, win the debate, and that's one of the ways okay, he's well, winning I, it. I just don't understand why good manners has gone out the window. But yeah, anyway. correct, correct. Now, Doctor, what did you think of, of that? He hasn't laughed yet. He hasn't smiled yet. Well, we'll see. Well, I apologise for not wearing my net <laughs> vest this morning. Um... <laughs> I, uh, you know, being a host of a one hour forum with Donald Trump is a great challenge. And yeah. uh, I, I think uh, it's a there's a stream of uh, statements that come from him uh, that may ring true to him and may excite his base. And that hall in New Hampshire, which is a deep Republican state and uh, was was full of his fans who had uh, crowded in. Uh, it was not a representative general electorate audience. Um, and uh, the, the, the challenge for a host, though, is that those very statements that, uh, you know, that may have elicited the right response from the audience from Trump's point of view were often false. For example, what you just played where he said, I never met that woman. There's a photograph of her and her then husband with him at an event. Uh, you know, so we know he met her. Um, there, there's photographic evidence of it. And furthermore, immediately following the uh, sexual assault, which a uh, jury has now found to have occurred, she uh, talked to two of her friends who both testified in the case and said that, um, you know, she told them about this. So, All right. Well, look, let, t tell me this, though. Why does he even need to do an interview like this? Because... I mean, he's the ex-president. Everybody knows who Donald Trump is. It's not as if he needs the profile. And, you know, when he declares and when he starts running, fine. But until we get to that point, why is he, why is he having to do little chats and meetings like this? Well, so this is the first salvo of the, of the election, really. He um, hasn't been in a mainstream media format like that since 2020. He's been in the, um, you know, conservative media bubble and on his own social media platform. Uh, but it gives, him a, it gives him an audience. It gives him an audience beyond his normal reach. Uh, and it gives a buzz, just like we're doing right here. All of the media this morning is focusing on this event. So it's essentially a kind of big infomercial from his point of view. The problem is that his messaging, I think he missed a moment, to be honest, because he didn't take the opportunity to challenge Joe Biden very much. He didn't uh, take the opportunity to present the case against the president uh, 
who's running for re-election. He instead tried to reproduce his claims about the the uh, last election, which he claims was a rigged election, a fraud, and so forth. But more than 60 courts have found there to be no evidence of that. And the American public doesn't believe it. Most people believe that Joe Biden was legitimately elected president of the United States. So, uh, and then he had to discuss this sexual assault case. So on both of these points, actually, it's toxic for the centrist women uh, sort of mothers, the classic swing voter who might be, not want taxes raised and be fiscally conservative, but socially moderate, uh, and also wants a kind of calm democracy. Um, and that reminds them of the Capitol riots, which he defended last night. Uh, it reminds them of the chaos of the election claims and uh, all of the divisiveness in the society. Okay. And so I'm not sure, even though he got a tremendous amount of attention out of this, that it was the kind of attention he needs to win the general election. And would he, Professor, just shortly and sweetly, do you think uh, if he was to run, uh, he, would, he, would, he would win? I think right now he's slated to win the Republican nomination, and last night probably helped with that. Uh, Ron DeSantis, his main opponent, doesn't want to go on CNN because he sees it as liberal mainstream media. But Donald Trump just took the opportunity then to kind of uh, outfox DeSantis on that front and get all the attention for himself. Um, and then in the general election, though, it's a bit of a toss up right now. Biden's poll numbers are not good. Inflation in the U.S. may look moderate from the British point of view, but it's high from the American point of view. Americans think the economy is going in the wrong direction. Biden seems old and is being tagged as old. If Biden can run against crazy, though, and say, you know, uh, it's a choice between me and crazy, then um, Biden may be able to pull it out. So it's really going to be a close election, I think. Thank you. Sleepy versus crazy. Thank you very much indeed, <laughs> Professor. Really appreciate your take on things. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.